Okay, thank you. So um, we're now at the mayor's race with incumbent Donna Whitener and challenger Rhonda Haight. Uh, thank you both for joining us. Um, it'll be the same format with uh, two minutes of opening statements from each of you and then a series of questions and then some closing comments. Uh, we've got uh, our version of the hook down here. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a notice of when uh, you have one minute to go and then 30 seconds to go and then there's a great big little stop sign if you, go, if you violate the two minute time frame. All right. Um, so uh, Ms. Whitener, as the incumbent, if you would uh, start us off with a two minute opening statement. You can do that either at the podium or at the table. Hello, I'm Donna Whitener, and I would like to thank the Chamber for hosting this event. I'm asking for your support as I seek a fourth term as mayor of the city of Blue Ridge. I'm a lifelong resident of Fanning County and a proud mother and grandmother. I'm the daughter of Dot and Don Rogers, and I continue their legacy as, as the owner of Town and Country Furniture. I am grateful for the trust the voters have placed in me in the last 12 years. Being mayor is more than showing up for a council meeting once a month. It means being available 24-7 for late night calls, checking storm related damages, water outages, and more. Uh, it's a job driven by the needs of the citizens and the city, and I wake up each and every day with a renewed opportunity to serve me. Twelve years ago, I inherited a city that was struggling financially with outdated infrastructure. But we have confronted many issues, found resolutions, and moved forward for the betterment of the city. The city has continuously upgraded water and sewer, our water and sewer system, which includes the plants, pump stations, and sewer lines. The city has been awarded around $20 million in grants, grants and funding during my 12-year term, and the millage rate has been reduced six times. I know we all have a wish list of projects for the city, but those must be prioritized and planned so that our limited resources are not exhausted. Also, during my service, I have been fortunate to be involved with boards and committees throughout our state. We are opening doors for progress and change in areas you and I are concerned about, including mental health, special needs, and public safety. I'm an active member of the Georgia Municipal Association, including their Legislative Policy Council, I'm on the board of the Georgia Risk Management Agency, the North Georgia Regional Commission, Highland Rivers Health, um, Redemption Outreach, and the Fenton County Board of Health. In closing, your voice matters. Re-elect me, Donna Weiner, Mayor of the City of Blue Ridge. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hay? First, I would like to thank the Chamber and its political committee for hosting this important forum. Secondly, I'd like to thank everyone who took time out of their busy schedules to educate themselves on us. The candidates who will be making important decisions that will affect us all. Decisions that are critical at this time in Blue Ridge's history. In fact, in the history of Blue Ridge, it is my opinion that this is the most important election we'll ever have. The future of Blue Ridge lies in the hands of all the folks you've heard tonight speak before us. As an experienced council person, I made the decision two years ago at a meeting that Blue Ridge needs a new leader and a new chief executive officer. I decided then that when the election came around, I would run for mayor. That was a decision that was easy for me. Blue Ridge needed a new direction. I saw that it wasn't what the people want, it's not what I want, and we needed a change. With that, I want to tell everyone that I will use my experience and knowledge of city finances, city infrastructure, zoning and planning, and other facets to protect our small town feel that we all love. As your mayor, I will promote unity, transparency, and controlled growth. The saying, if you're early, you're on time, if you're on time, you're late, it simplifies Blue Ridge. No one thought that a 60-foot building could go up, but it did. I, as a council member, spearheaded the movement to lower the building heights to 35 feet.
These are the type of changes that I will continue to promote. We have major issues concerning affordable housing. As your mayor, I will dedicate myself to finding opportunities that will assist in providing affordable housing to all, the workforce, Section 8, everyone who needs affordable housing. And my time has ended. Thank you. First question, Ms. Haight, we'll start with you. How do you propose to protect the existing neighborhoods against commercialism in the area? That's a perfect question for me. I truly live in downtown Blue Ridge. I'm a true resident of the city of Blue Ridge. I don't just live in Fannin County. Where I live, I live on East Main Street, which has had encroachments of restaurants. At night, many times, I have to listen to music. I have to listen to the loud noise. I have to hear cars going by. I have to see the traffic jams that are happening in a residential area. This should never happen. As a true resident of, of the city of Blue Ridge, I see the problems and I know that something has to be done to protect the residential areas. This is extremely important. To me, we look at zoning and we never, ever zone something unless there is a feathered zone. In other words, you don't go from CBD to residential. It goes from the highest use CBD to C2 to C1 to residential. That's the way it should be. That's the way our zoning code is set up, but that's not how it's been over the years. And for the example of where I live, there is a restaurant that went in that never should have gone in. The city did not do its due diligence. It's very simple. They did not do a traffic study as the ordinance, as alcohol ordinance states. There's no traffic study, there's no impact study on the residents. This should never happen. If I'm mayor, I will make sure that our ordinances are enforced. That is the duty of a mayor as per the charter. And I will make sure that everything we do is enforced to protect the residents of the city. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Whitener? Would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Okay, how do you propose to protect the existing neighborhoods against commercialism in the area? Okay, our zoning has been in place since 1978, and we've had very few amendments over the years, but we've had a lot of growth just in the last couple of years, and COVID is one of the reasons a lot of folks are moving here, and they can work from home now. But um, one of my one of my things that I think we should do is we should reevaluate our zoning maps. We should actually probably bring in some experts to help us with deciding where we're moving forward with commercial, where we're moving forward with residential. Um, and then I really feel like the other thing is we have a zoning, um, a zoning and planning commission that actually hears the, um, the request before the city council does. But I really think we need to make sure that our zoning and planning commission and our city council have zoning and planning training. I think that would really eliminate some of our problems. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Whitener, if, if you will take this uh, question and respond first. What are your thoughts on a city manager form of government for the city of Blue Ridge? Okay, well, I have uh, been on the fence with that for years. When I first became mayor, I was really interested in the city manager board of government. But as the years have went by, I've talked to many other managers and um, city mayors. Um, there are 42 cities that are about the size of Blue Ridge with a population of about 1,000 to 1,600 people. Out of that 42, only seven of those have city managers. City managers are quite expensive. Um, they also take away the personal touch that elected officials have. Once you're elected, those people want your phone number, they want to be able to call you, and they want you to be able to handle their problems. They really don't want you to pass it on to somebody else. So I think it's something we should look at. I think it's something we should uh, discuss with the public, and I think that we should have a couple of workshops and talk about what type of government we really need in the city of Blue Ridge. Thank you. 
Ms. Hayden, what are your thoughts about a city manager form of government? I am 100% in favor of a city manager form of government. In fact, during our during this last year, I made the motion that we move forward with a city manager form of government, and it passed. Uh, all four council members at the meeting unanimously passed it. It made it to the state, but never made it to the floor of the General Assembly. And it is my opinion that a city that is the size of ours, we've talked about the growth, how big it's become. The tourism industry is huge. How can we operate if we don't have a full-time person there? As someone mentioned earlier, the mayor makes $700 a month. Council members make five. We all have full-time jobs. How would you like it in the school system if you had, if you didn't have a superintendent who was there 40 hours a week to oversee the projects that are going on? That's been one of the major problems with our city is that projects don't get completed. Things aren't getting done in a timely manner. And if we had someone who's there full time, who's in charge, it doesn't take away from that personal, what would be a personal effect, because people would still call us, they're still going to contact us, but it leaves someone in charge on a day-to-day -day basis. I know when any of us, we kind of come and go from City Hall, but one person needs to be in charge. They need to make sure that all the projects, they need to have weekly meetings with all department heads and make sure one department isn't doing something that's going to interfere with the other department and that all departments know what's going on. And a city manager would be the person who does this. So 100% in favor of a city manager. This one will start with you, Ms. Haight. There have been several master planning initiatives presented to the city council over the last eight years with no action by the council members. If you're elected, what is your commitment to long-term strategic planning for the city? So, when I was my first term on council, and I have been on the same as Ms. Whitener, um, we actually, we hired a group from the University of Georgia, and they worked with the 2020 group in producing a a strategic plan. Unfortunately, that plan was kind of put to the wayside. It was never put into place. So right now we have a lot of information, as even Dr. Whaley stated, he said he has a stack of information this high, showing where we have done studies, where we have a strategic plan that we could easily implement. And I think things have obviously changed over the years, but it could be easily put into place. So with a strategic plan, I think the biggest thing is bringing unity to our council because that's been the biggest problem in getting anything accomplished is unity. And when we have people working together for a good cause, which is for the benefit of the community, I think we would all work together in order to bring a strategic plan into place. And that has definitely been the problem is that we, none of us can get along. We need a leader at the top who brings us together, who pulls us together. We're not always going to agree, but we need someone who embraces that and who works, communicates with us, and then we work through plans. We don't need someone who's going to constantly tear people apart. We need unity, and with unity, we can pull together these plans that we have, such as strategic planning. Okay, thank you. Ms. Whitener, would you like me to repeat the question? Uh, yes, if you don't mind. Uh, there have been several master planning initiatives presented to the City Council over the last eight years without action by the Council members. If you're elected, what is your commitment to long-term strategic planning for the City? Okay. Those master plans, the str strategic plans, and I think one of them was referred to as the 2020 downtown grant. Um, I think they need to include our residential areas as much as our business areas also. We've had those on the table, we've pulled them out several times, we've sent them to the council members, but we have to make some decisions. I do think those plans are probably dated now and we're going to have to take another look, so I would love to have the Carl Benson Institute or somebody come back in, 
do another strategic plan with the new council and let's move forward. Let's get it on the books. Let's get it done. Let's start making plans to make a difference. The other thing is right now we are in the process of in the next few weeks starting to work on the Fayette County Comprehensive Plan which includes the cities and the county. Uh, and I would like to invite anybody that would like to be involved in that to reach out to me at City Hall. We would love to have your input. So um, I'm in favor of a strategic plan. So this next question is a little bit different. It has two parts, and I'd like a one-sentence answer, as short as you can, please. Ms. Whitener, uh, the first, first part of the question is, what's one thing Blue Ridge should be proud of? I mean, my microphone, right? Um, gosh, I'm proud of everything about Blue Ridge, so that's kind of tough for me. Uh, but one thing is that we, our, our scenery is just gorgeous here. We have a beautiful downtown, and I don't go anywhere that I, that was more than one sentence, right? <laughs> Sorry. If you can. Our scenery, we have a beautiful downtown. Great, thank you. Ms. Hayden? Blue Ridge should be proud of its history and of its people because we have a good group of people who have come in from all over who have made Blue Ridge their home, and we should be proud of that. Great, thank you. And then the second part of the question is, uh, Ms. Whitener, the one thing Blue Ridge can do better. Um, well, I thought we were perfect, but I guess not. Uh, I think one of the things that I've heard tonight uh, from a lot of folks, um, and, and I don't know if this is where you're headed with that, um, a lot of people seem to have complaints or issues. I think one of the things we could do is have a better open line of communication, maybe some, uh, some way for those folks to send in anything that they have an issue with so that the city does know about it, because a lot of things I hear have never been told about. Okay, thank you. Ms. Hay, what's one thing that the Blue Ridge can do better? One thing Blue Ridge could do better is protect its residents and uplift them at the same time. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Hayden, we'll start with you for this question. What do you see as the most important asset for this asset for the city of Blue Ridge? and how do you propose to maintain and strengthen that asset? One of the um, biggest assets the city of Blue Ridge has is its workforce, and it's the downtown businesses. It's how we brought our economy together. Um, someone mentioned earlier, too, how we came through the recession and how the economy has really maintained its strength. I saw that during COVID. We, ex we anticipated that the revenue, tax revenue, would come down drastically. However, it didn't. It went up. And during the first month of COVID, it was almost like a ghost town downtown. And uh, with that, when you're looking at our community, you see that these things, the economy, and how the residents, how the people, how all the workers uh, come together. I think we as a council can do things to help the workers in order to help the businesses themselves. And with this, it will also enable taxes to go up so that we can have more rollbacks with our taxes to help our citizens. So really everything kind of works together in my opinion, and that's how it has to be in politics, in world politics, in politics in the United States. Okay, thank you. Ms. Whitener, what do you see as the most important asset for the city of Blue Ridge, and how do you propose to maintain and strengthen that asset? Uh, I think it's our businesses downtown and throughout the community, or throughout our city. Um, most of the folks come into the city of Blue Ridge to dine and to shop, and I think that in supporting those businesses and we can keep them moving forward, I think it's uh, I think that's our, truly our best asset, is to have a, a great downtown area so people can enjoy not only the daytime, but even a little bit of the entertainment at night, the music, um, and actually the dining is right there. Ms. Whitener, the, the final question of this forum, if you'll uh, be the first to respond, what are your hopes and dreams for the marriage? Well, my hopes 
and dreams. I really like the ridge where we're at right now, and I would love to freeze that, but I don't think that will happen. So that as we move forward in the next several years, I hope that we can still maintain our small town flavor and enhance what we already have. But, um, you know, I know like any other city, we're going to grow, but we just need to be very cautious about how we grow. Thank you. Ms. Hayden, what are your hopes and dreams for Blue Ridge? I, my hope for Blue Ridge is that we keep that small town feel. I want to make sure that, that we don't have tall buildings, that we have a quaint community that everyone loves. Um, I want to protect the farmer's market. I want to make sure that the city assets are taken care of and that they're utilized. I want a place that where people enjoy going on the weekends to buy uh, crafts, to buy uh, vegetables, just like in Blairsville. I'd love to see the farmer's market. Uh, I, I want to see it thrive. I also want to see our city parks. I want to see our city pool be redone or rebuilt. Um, we think about the people in the community, but what about the kids? Uh, I, I want to see that change so that we have things for our children to do in the parks and rec department. I think with that, I'd like to see the city put money into, like I said, rebuilding the city pool, possibly looking at putting a skate park doing fun things that will bring young people that they will enjoy being in town. Uh, so I think if we look at all of our city assets, you know, we even own the Swan Drive-In, the city owns that in its lease. Um, I think to maintain that, to even help it grow. I know during COVID, it, 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 it was very popular, but if we take all of our assets, those things that we own as a city, and we put money into them, and we put time into them, and we baby them, they're only going to get better. And that's where I hope to see the city. Thank you. Okay, and finally, we will have our closing statement. So, Ms. Whitener, if you can give your two minute closing statement. Okay, is it okay if I sit here? That podium made me very nervous. It yes. rocked really bad. And I was afraid I was going to turn it over, but it's been so embarrassing. Okay, thank you all for being here and thank you to the Chamber for hosting this event. Once again, I am Donna Whitener asking for your prayer, support, and vote. As a small child, I remember shopping in downtown Blue Ridge, but by the time I became a teenager, our shops were boarded up with only a handful of businesses open. Today we have a vibrant downtown that is truly a wonderful place to live, work, and play. I have never and will never take the job of mayor and the opportunity to serve you for granted. I will continue to work hard each and every day to earn your trust, and my commitment has and always will be to the citizens of Blue Ridge. Uh, my professional growth plays an important role in my service to the city. I have completed many municipal government courses, including the newly elected officials institute, finance, law, public policy, taxation, water and wastewater systems, human trafficking, and more. And while the mayor gets blamed for a lot, did you know that I've only voted on issues fewer than 10 times in the last 12 years as mayor? Per the charter, the five elected council members are authorized to transact the business of the city by voting on each ordinance, resolution, or motion. The mayor only votes in a tie. As mayor, my role includes the supervision and coordination of the city's administrative activities. While I've spent much of my time tonight telling you who I am, I'd like to close tonight by telling you who I am not. I am not asking for a pay raise like my opponent. I am not asking the citizens to pass my duties on to someone else. I have no financial gain with any properties in any proposed affordable housing efforts. I have not promised anything to anyone in exchange for their support. Please remember, your vote matters, and I'm asking for your vote and support. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Hayden. Tonight, you've had an opportunity to listen to the candidates. Tonight, you've had an opportunity to formulate an idea of which candidate you feel is best suited for Blue Ridge. Let us not forget that many of the candidates you're hearing from tonight have already served their community in public roles, including myself and my opponent, Donna Whitener. Go back through our history and look at what each of us have supported throughout our time in office. If you look at my history as compared to my opponents, 
I support affordable housing. I support, I support full transparency in every aspect of city business, including sending all contract work out for open bids. I support keeping Blue Ridge small and quaint. I don't want to see any more 60-foot buildings in my town. When my opponent vetoed our new ordinance to lower building heights to 35 feet, I pushed forward in making sure the ordinance remained intact. Look over our history. Reread old newspapers. The articles that clearly show that Blue Ridge needs a new direction in leadership. They say actions speak louder than words, and that is true. I say these things tonight because both my opponent and I have both a political history in Blue Ridge. Again, go back and see who you want to lead the city forward. From what I've heard from the residents and business owners, we want to keep it simple. A vote for me is a vote for controlled growth, a master plan and preservation of our small town. A vote for me is not a vote for giving special interest to developers. A vote for me is a vote for the residents. Thank you. I'd like to thank all of the candidates for being here tonight. We'd also like to thank ETC3 for televising this. Um, this will also be available on the Chamber's uh, Facebook page. The uh, information about the uh, additional viewings that ETC has agreed to rebroadcast this. I'll run through those one more time. They'll also be sent out in the newsletter. Um, but it will be uh, rebroadcast Tuesday, October 12th, 19th, and 26th at 1 p.m. Thursday, October 14th, 21st, and 28th at 7 p.m. Sunday, October 17th, 24th, and 31st at 2 p.m. Thank you, too, to everyone who's here tonight participating in this process. Early voting begins on October 11th, and the general election is November 2nd. Thank you all.